I know what I would want my art to sound like. Mm-hmm. What it does, what like my art now or up to this date sounds mm-hmm. like, I don't know. Like okay. drowning. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Gridiron Gab Fest. It's Super Bowl weekend. It's a matchup for the ages. Will Patrick Mahomes and the high flying Chiefs offense prevail against the oppressive Niners defense? We're taking your calls. <laughs> okay. Sorry, that's my other podcast, guys. <laughs> this is Waiting to Dry. I am Sergio Lopez. I'm Josh Lawyer. And we have Camille Corey on the podcast today. Hi there. And we um, have uh, Vanessa actually <laughs> listening as well. <laughs> uh, thank you for doing this. Yeah, uh, thanks for so, having me. Yeah, we're at a. Uh, uh, Baca. I can never remember exactly what the acronyms for the it's school is. Bay Area Classical Artist Atelier. Okay, there I you believe. go. We you, got it. Do you double pronounce the A at the end? Do you go Baca? Uh? <laughs> Baca. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's a joke they've probably heard too many Probably. Times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, you're you're an out of towner. I am. I live in Salt Lake City. Nice. Yeah. And you told us earlier that you're buddies with Bryce. I am. Yeah. That's cool. Bryce Liston, amazing yeah. guy. Yeah, amazing yeah. artist. Yeah. Do you go to his uh, studio and paint with him sometimes? I do. Nice. Yep. Absolutely. Awesome. I think I saw on your Instagram or his that you posed for him. Yeah. He was doing a DVD with a friend of his. Mm-hmm. Um, she has Bella Muse Productions. So she oh, does okay. these instructional mm-hmm. videos. And so Bryce was doing a portrait and figure and his portrait model something happened and he gave me a call oh really and huh. said do you want to pose for a portrait <laughs> I'm like in I'm desperate and so I went so you were the fill-in so for when the they were fill-in. when they were recording oh my god that <laughs> yeah been terrifying for him at first but yeah <laughs> how was that for you it was great yeah yeah i loved it <laughs> i mean it was everything i could do just not crack up the whole time <laughs> yeah. it, it's pretty funny yeah, yeah. 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 it's hilarious yeah <laughs> Was that have you posed for like paintings before? Oh, yeah. I uh, mean, really. as a young art student, it's uh, you know, you're sense. always posing for each other. And mm. uh, the reason I actually met my teacher, Jeffrey Mims, mm-hmm. um, he's in North Carolina, but mm. I met him in Florence because I was kind of trekking around to the art schools looking for work as a model because I had no oh, money really? and mm. I moved, was moving back into the city. and. And so it was because of that, and I ended up modeling for him for mm-hmm. a big mural and ended up like doing an apprenticeship with them you uh-huh. know, in the end because I was an artist and I had gone there to study. So that's cool. Yeah. Nice. So, yeah. so what is your background? Like, how'd you, you seem like you're, you're more classically trained, like kind of a Sergio route than me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, definitely. I mean, my primary teacher was Jeffrey Mims, mm-hmm. um, but I went to Florence when I was uh, about 21 mm-hmm. with a one-way ticket and determined to find an art school that would teach me something. Wow. And so, but I had no idea what I wanted. I had no idea I wanted a classical training. Mm-hmm. If you would have asked me that, I probably would have said no. I just mm-hmm. wanted to be, you know, modern, big sort of New York type artist or something but i wanted to learn something and university wasn't teaching me anything so i dropped out Mm -hmm. and uh went to florence and never intended to ever come back to the states and just hoping i would find something and i met um jeffrey mims and charles cecil and dan graves mm -hmm. and then ended up kind of going that route and jeffrey didn't have a school at the time so it really was an apprenticeship for seven years with him. And then I did kind of unofficial studies with Charles Cecil and Dan Graves mm. before they split. And then Dan had the Florence Academy and Charles kept his school. Um, but big influences in my life. And I was also modeling at Studio Cecil Graves, mm. too, um, which means you learn a lot, you know, mm. as you're sure, there, yeah. being a model. It's really amazing. That's awesome. So, how did you know to go to Florence in the first place then? I mean, you know, Italy as uh, an artist. Just like, yeah. I had been there once. My brother um, took me. He was younger than I was, and um, he still is younger than I am. <laughs> but uh, he took Catch me. Catch up. <laughs> <I know. laughs> 
Yeah, he took me to Florence. He had gone there on a field trip with his study abroad in high school and just said, you, you would love Florence. You've got to come. So we did a trip together uh, when I was like 19 years old and fell in love with it, of course. That's and awesome. um, And at that same time, I was pretty much dropping out of university. So, so I just had this dream of like, I'm going back to Florence. I'm going to go find an art school. Somebody's got to have something that will teach you <laughs> so something. Was you know? there a switch kind of in your brain when you figured like tr on the pursuit to kind of be this like abstract artist? What clicked mm -hmm. is like, oh, I've been on the wrong path, like the wrong path for myself. Well, um, I like from the time I was a small girl, mm -hmm. I always knew I wanted to be an artist. And I was very, I was always very realistic in my mm -hmm. rendering. I mean, you know, we all copied photographs and right. and whatever, but I was really into that. And then when I got into high school and university, I was trying everything, mm -hmm. all, every, any abstract, whatever, all kinds of different art. But every time I did something that wasn't um, like realistic, I guess at the time, I felt very uncreative. And so I always kind of knew that I probably wouldn't really be an abstract painter. Mm -hmm. But um, but when, so when I went to Florence and I met Jeffrey Mims, I was still kind of experimenting with stuff, but I would mm -hmm. always feel uncreative unless I was copying something from nature. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and it just felt like unfulfilling and just a piece instead of, I don't know, just felt like a little tiny piece of the puzzle or something to me. Mm. So um, when I met Jeffrey Mims and he started giving me critiques on my work, it was the first time somebody critiqued me and it, it, that I actually learned something from it. And he mm. was doing a big mural. And so I was modeling for this. So I was seeing all the stages of the mural, all the oh, studies cool. and yeah. the little bozzetti of the, with the clay and the mm. color studies and then all the drawings and... Um, and it was just, it was really through him, um, with his critiques of my work of just these little drawings I was doing around Florence. It just all of a sudden, it was like, wow, I didn't know there was still this type of art out there mm -hmm. where you could really learn a Like to me, like a classical training is more of a, um, it's like more comprehensive training. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean that it's like just you're learning the classics necessarily, but it's just, it, it's like the whole thing. It's way more comprehensive mm -hmm. and inclusive to me. And so learning anatomy and learning about composition and design, as well as drawing from life. Right. Um, and also growing up, nobody had told me not to draw from photographs, that if you draw from life, it's much more challenging. Mm -hmm. mm. And so I didn't do that until I got to Florence, and that was a whole other world, you know. So huh. That's interesting. Uh, God, I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're talking about, like, comprehensive, you you mean more like the, I guess, the overall principles of artistic Mm -hmm. um, just like the elements that make yeah, just, up a mm -hmm. piece of art. Um, so it seems a little bit more thorough. Mm -hmm. I see. I mean, that's just kind of my take on it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I remember I was working this random like like job, and I remember I was talking to this guy who knew a lot about stuff, and he told me I was talking to him, and he was like, "Oh yeah, one of my skills that I really kind of developed was just the ability to know when I'm talking to someone." who knows what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. And I think like, that's like a good thing for artists is kind of having the ability to see like, Oh, this person knows what they like when they say something, they actually mean something, yeah. you know? And, and it, it's only there to make you better. Or if you decide not to pick it up, then that's your fault. But, yeah. you know, and it, it kind of, I think that's where like the classical training is like, has that ability to, point out the flaws in what you're doing mm -hmm. rather than i would say i don't know an abstract it seems more like you're kind of in the middle of an ocean trying to find your way somewhere mm -hmm. and you have no idea what direction to swim yeah yeah so i don't know that that it, it, it makes sense to me why you would why an artist would kind of you know cling on to something that has oh like a 
definite direction of how to get good right. at this craft we do. Right. I mean, actual skills involved. Because yeah. when mm-hmm. I was in the university, and this was in like mid 80s, mm-hmm. it was, it felt like all the classes, it felt like I was in kindergarten mm. doing grade school projects right. and learning no skills, mm. learning mm-hmm. nothing. Like they just give you projects. Go collect some trash and make a sculpture out of it, or, <laughs> or they might set up something. I did have one drawing class where they would set up like little still life things, right? Mm-hmm. But nobody's teaching you how to see, mm-hmm. how to render. Probably you know, even why you're even doing it. <laughs> why you're doing it? Mm-hmm. It's just a project to keep you busy. Mm-hmm. It seems like one of those like, like the idea of like oh paint like a child. <laughs> People just took that and just went the wrong direction with it or something it's like if that's your idea then just kind of go to the elementary schools and just be like don't get better (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) Uh, yeah that's that's i feel like this is like a reoccurring kind of conversation Mm -hmm. a lot of artists have when they end up in a school that isn't fulfilling its side Mm -hmm. of the um the bargain of making you a a at least giving you the tool sets to mm-hmm. make the art you want to make. Yeah. Uh, that sucks. Well, <laughs> I don't even know if I should ask what school that was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Regular university in America. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Basically, yeah, yeah, you could plug in most mm-hmm. universities into that yeah. equational. So Same from idea. Yeah. So from school, where'd you go after that? Like, what, what, what's your? Well, yeah, I, I mean, I dropped out within the first six months of my <laughs> entering the university, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and um, and then just started working full time in restaurants and mm-hmm. saving money to go to Italy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but meanwhile, I actually ended up learning how uh, I learned printmaking, specifically etching, like the real mm-hmm. traditional technique of etching, wow. as well as some lithography. Mm-hmm. Uh, an art center in Salt Lake City, hmm. and the etching I really, really loved. Hmm. And luckily, I had a teacher who really knew her stuff. And so that actually, when I went to Florence with this one-way ticket and no idea of what art school I wanted to go to, I actually did know I wanted to go to one etching school in Florence. Oh. Um, not as like my and all be all training, but I just I really wanted to go to this etching school. It's called Il Bisonte. A uh, very famous, um, lots of famous artists have de, you know done prints. Do you there. still do etchings? No, I have not done it since then. <coughs> oh really? Oh. Just hmm. because I never set myself up with an etching studio. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, because then when I met Mims and then all the Florentine crowd, I ended up just being a painter. Mm. It's weird how that happens sometimes, mm. where you kind of like like to do a process of art that you wish you mm. can do it. It, it it has to have like the perfect setup, setup. yeah. Like, and sometimes yeah. you can fall into that, and sometimes mm-hmm. you wish you had it, but you just never right. end up in that kind of yeah. realm. That's why painting, I think, is so like attractive because you can. It's easy enough you can to get it set yeah. up. Well, I actually thought when I went to Florence, actually, my idea was to be a sculptor. I literally mm-hmm. thought I was going to go and and learn how to sculpt stone, and and that was it. Oh wow. Um, even though I've always painted and drawn my mm-hmm. li- all my life, but um, I really had this notion I was going to go learn how to sculpt. Was That's there, what I was gonna, going to do. Was there a purpose for, like, did you have a reason why sculpting seemed attractive? Because I love Michelangelo. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. <laughs> his work makes me cry. It still mm-hmm. does. Um, I just, I don't know. I was always enamored with his work. And, mm-hmm. I, and so... I, I remember... I. There was like a little bit of time where I was talking to the surgeon. I was like, I think I might want to sculpt. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think my reasons for it were specifically just so I could have art that lasts a long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think a lot of people kind of have that idea. Yeah. But I realized, I think when I was at the Legion of Honor, I realized that like I don't pay attention to the sculptures as much as I paint pay attention to the paintings. Um, it's almost like I'm walking by them like, oh, wait, I should probably 
look at that. <laughs> yeah, I feel that way sometimes. It's a weird too. thing. Yeah. I, I didn't realize, and I was like, oh, I guess I'm ju- I'm just attracted to paintings, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. just more. I mean, I. It's weird because I love a sculpture in a photo. Like I've seen them, like that's amazing. Mm-hmm. But when they're right in front of me, I just don't pay <laughs> attention to them. It. It's weird. Uh, I wonder if that's really common amongst painters. I bet it is. Maybe. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm the opposite. Mm-hmm. I get oh, really? way more inspired by sculpture. Really? I huh. Still do. And I'd much rather spend time in front of the sculptures. That's interesting. Nice. In a museum. Huh. I mean, I look at both, but I yeah. definitely the sculpture is. I don't know, just the solidity of stone mm-hmm. and, you know, you just want to, t- you just want to touch it mm-hmm. and feel the coldness of it or mm-hmm. the roughness or whatever. And, hmm. um, yeah, oh, it's that's another lifetime. Like I really have to, if I start doing anything in clay, which I've done lots of studies just for whatever. And when I had my, um, I had my own atelier in Salt Lake City, my students would have to sculpt Crochets, mm-hmm. and we also did mm-hmm. sculpting, like portrait sculpting, and some figure sculpting, just so that they could understand the form better. And every time I got out of the clay, I wouldn't paint for weeks. Mm-hmm. I have no desire to paint when I'm sculpting, and so, mm-hmm. like, even I have such a desire to to go and like do some stone carving or just learn how to do it in a workshop, you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. But I'm actually afraid of that huh. because I feel like I would not ever want to touch paint again wow but why does it matter because i still need to make a living uh, and as an artist that's as an artist is my only option yeah. and so hmm. i just feel like at this point in my life to start sculpting i don't know yeah it feels way too difficult to get to enter that as far as being able to make a living from it and also as sculptors <clears throat> i mean the upfront cost seems like so much more. Mm. I mean, yeah. it's enough, you know, as a painter with your frames and shipping and model, and just all your materials, right? And especially like classical sculptors. I feel like so much of like government funded like art is sculpture, but a lot of it is kind of like a metal mm-hmm. shape. Thing. Right, exactly. Yeah. And, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A large. Something that looks like half a spoon or something. Yeah. yeah. A large thumb. Yeah. Th- <laughs> th- th- thumb pin thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, thumb tack. <laughs> thumb tack. Yeah, that's the word I was looking for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like the classical kind of version of that, which I assume you you would go I'd towards. I'd still be maybe. doing figurative sculpture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it seems like, like it just doesn't have a place. To yeah. Like find a like it doesn't have a, a like funding for it to. Yeah, I think it would be so much more difficult to mm-hmm. get it going, and especially like I don't like bronze actually. Mm-hmm. Oh, Not that yeah. I don't like any bronze, but I don't in general. I just, I don't know. I like the stone. And the so that fired. would even be, <laughs> that would even be harder. Right. Just, you know? Hmm. Yeah. yeah. I imagine so. Yeah. Because most, it looks like most um, commissioned sculptures are bronze, right? I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but. Uh, I don't really know. But yeah, you'd think so. And you can make, you can make the reproductions of mm-hmm. them. And, mm, that's you know, true too. Yeah. yeah. Can't really do that with stone, really. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's kind of sad. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's weird when you think about that kind of, like what artists do to pay a bill is so yeah. depressing sometimes. <laughs> yeah, they have to paint. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess that's not that bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you do like painting. Right? <laughs> I do like painting. Um, I love painting. I wouldn't trade it for anything except for maybe sculpting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's another life. Sculpting so. in a million bucks. <laughs> in, a, in an alternate universe, you're sculpting like yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just Definitely. let that yeah. please you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to that version of you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, that's crazy. <laughs> so, so you moved back from Italy when? Well, I came, I was in Italy for three years. Mm-hmm. And then I ended up going to North Carolina to continue studying with Mims. Oh, okay. That's where he's from. And then I was there for about six years mm. and then moved back to Salt Lake. Hmm. And that wasn't nice. the plan, but it happened. And you were like, Salt Lake's like home, home? Salt Lake's home. I mean, I grew up about an hour away in a smaller mm-hmm. town, but mm-hmm. close enough. And then, yeah, when I was, when I got out of high school, I moved right to Salt Lake City. When oh. I was 18, so. That's cool. 
Uh, and Salt Lake's a good city. I, I like it a lot, actually. And I didn't, when I left North Carolina, I, I wanted, I had this thing in my head that I wanted to buy a house. So I would have mm-hmm. a studio in my house and I was going to fix it up and mm-hmm. sell it in five years and go back to Italy forever. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> and that didn't happen mm-hmm. for various reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, so I still have my house, and but now I go back to Italy every year for a few months. Nice. Do you think you'll ever kind of end up there? Uh, yeah. That's yeah, the angle yeah, still? Sure. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. I mean, I kind of want to keep my house in America because, mm-hmm. you know, we do business in America. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I, I like America. It's easy. I mean, but I'd rather... I'd kind of rather do nine months in Italy and three months in America, mm-hmm. where it's the opposite right now. So th- is the weather the same there as it is here? I have no concept of what it's Italy's about, weather. Probably it's probably closer to, to California yeah. weather, oh, yeah. California weather. You talk get snow and all that good stuff, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, Italy does Which, too. But yeah, like northern so Italy is probably northern more. Italy does. I know nothing about that area. <laughs> it's just a lot more humid than Utah. Oh, it's really? Really dry. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. Huh? That's cool. High desert. Yeah. It's good, right? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I like the humidity, to tell you the truth. Oh, really? really? Mm-hmm. Oh. I'm a sweaty human being. So <laughs> humidity is like my enemy. <laughs> <Chain> nemesis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Same here. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. well, good luck on that goal. I mean. Thank you. <laughs> I'm working towards it. <laughs> That's cool. I mean, it's cool. It's weird that you had this calling. It seems like since you were... How old were you when you first went? To Italy? Yeah. Um, was it 21, you said? Or? I was 21 when I moved there mm-hmm. to go find a school. Mm. Yeah. And I had been there before. That's cool. Before. Yeah. And it just kind of called to you even before you went there, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, and you're in the university and you go down the halls and they've got all the study abroad posters mm-hmm. with sure, all the beautiful yeah. pictures. <laughs> you're like, ah. Right. Like up there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know. But it's cool that it lived up to the hype at least. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Italy's definitely the place I feel most at home. It always was. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's kind of easy for an artist with the history there, but mm-hmm. right. yeah. Nice. So now that now you're in Utah and you kind of yeah. just you work out of that ba- that's your base. That's my base in America, yeah. Nice. And you bought the house. I bought the house. Oh, nice. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So that's a big part of the plan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I still I th- have the house. Yeah, I think I think also like five years is like a, a uh like sometimes I make these plans in my head, I'm like, oh yeah, in yeah. five years and five years is there like in a snap <laughs> and you're like, Oh well, that was way faster yeah. than I it expected. Goes mm-hmm. So fast. Yeah. yeah. Like, I need more than that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I know. <laughs> how do we live infinite amount of yeah. time? <laughs> Double at least. Uh, that's cool. Exactly. So, so I don't know anything about the Utah art scene. Is it? I mean, it seems like it would have a classical kind of background because there's such like a Mormon because of the conservative. Yeah, because there's aspect, and, I, yeah. and I feel like that they kind of lean towards that that form of art. That seems to be impression I've gotten as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, there are a lot of, I think anywhere, if you have more of a religious conservative community, you're mm-hmm. going to, a lot of those people will veer towards the classical realism or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yes, yeah, you do have a lot of that. Mm-hmm. Um, but you also have a lot of non-Mormons who are doing that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of artists there. Mm-hmm. Lots of artists. Um you know, Jeff Hines there as well, Bruce oh, yeah. Liston, mm-hmm. um, Ryan Brown, who's got the, I can't remember the name of his academy because he changed it. Um, mm. But yeah, I'm so, familiar with his yeah, work. Yeah, so there's a few people with ateliers and um, the Utah art scene, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> in general, it feels just like anywhere in America. Hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of artists. Mm-hmm. The gallery scene isn't great. There's a couple of good galleries up in Park City. Mm, okay. Um, for sure. That can sell your work. But um, I haven't really, I mean, even though I'm from there, I haven't really gotten into the art scene as far as selling my work there. Um, <clears throat> I had this interesting conversation really with did that. someone recently where they were saying that, like, there's this weird devaluing of work based on the fact that you're a local artist like Mm -hmm. like it's like almost like oh this person's from like if i Mm -hmm. show my work in another area they're like oh this person's not from here then people Mm -hmm. like oh (laughs) yeah and i totally get that kind of vibe from from like people it's like oh this is 
we don't value the, the artists that are thing. local. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's it's more special if they're mm-hmm. from a state over or something. Maybe so. I don't know that I really thought about that. What happened? Um, I'll try not to name names, but what happened when I moved back to Utah from mm-hmm. North Carolina? I was still really young, but I had started selling my work and I had sold a lot of it in North Carolina already. Okay. Um, my prices were really low, mm-hmm. but I'd already been selling for maybe a year or two. And mm-hmm. I came back to Utah and um, a very prominent gallery wanted my work before I even got there. Mm-hmm. And then I went up and we were signing contracts and I had all my work with me and this gallery was ready to take it. And then they saw my prices mm-hmm. and said, we can't sell your work for these prices. And I, I said, well... I've already been selling my work for these prices. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing was, is that that very day on the way up to the gallery, I sold four paintings to two clients randomly, no frames at gallery prices. Hmm. They didn't question me about my prices. The gallery that didn't want to have you, they thought the prices were too high? They thought my prices were too high because I wasn't known. I Mm. was young. I hadn't been living there. Nobody knew my name. Mm. And so in the end... I sh- I was saying, well, I could lower them this much, but mm-hmm. ha- they wanted me to lower the prices so much that I couldn't pay for frames. Mm. And I was picky. I had really nice frames around mm-hmm. the paintings mm-hmm. and whatever, but I couldn't lower my prices to that. And so I said, sorry, mm, I'll ship them back east where I've been selling them. And that's, yeah. has been, that's what happened. All these years I've been in Utah, I've ended up with Anne Long Fine Art in Charleston. Mm. And... Um, I'm pretty sure that's where I saw your work in person. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, you were actually in the gallery? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So it never, like, I've had random shows in Utah, not one person shows or anything, but just in group shows, I've had work there. Mm -hmm. And, um, but in a gallery, I had a gallery in Park City. They're not open anymore, but they sold a few pieces. But my prices weren't. They were too high for the art market. So what I've found in Utah is that the the, the market is just lower as far as prices go. Like mm-hmm. they're not going to compare to a lot of areas, galleries in California or back east. Mm-hmm. Um, Park City, though, where the Sundance Film Festival is and everything, mm-hmm. they can they command higher prices, mm-hmm. but they're still not. They're still not like on the coast. Right. Interesting. And so it was not like. I don't know, it wasn't really worth it to me to try Mm -hmm. to get into the gallery scene there. And, Mm -hmm. I mean, there's some galleries I really like in the gallery owners, so I'm not trying to put anybody down, but it just, they weren't galleries that I felt would really do anything for me um, to make it worth lowering my prices. And it's like, and you know, it's so, you're always so busy and trying to get enough work to whatever gallery you're working with that I just... right. I stuck with the stuff back east, and that did it for me, you know? Yeah, that makes sense. And luckily, as an artist, you don't have to make a living where you work. You can ship your work, and so... Yeah, um, yeah. I think it was what Joshua Flint you were talking about does the same thing. He's yeah. based out of Portland, but sends his work like to New York or something like that. Yeah, and I think it makes sense. It's making me think I should move to a cheaper area. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I mean, if you can send it to a market where... The, they're more willing to pay a higher price and live mm-hmm. in an area where it's cheaper. It just makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What have I been doing with my life? <laughs> <laughs> I never actually thought about that aspect. <laughs> I mean, then you have shipping costs. but Right. Yeah. But I mean, we still have shipping costs here. Like, right. Yeah, exactly. If we ship yeah. Yeah. out of state. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's something I have to think about more. <laughs> My wife would never let me move. <laughs> uh, uh, well, that's cool. Uh, huh. I, I mean, I don't know. It's that. That's that's the weird thing with like. Uh, I always get this like weird reaction when I hear about galleries, kind of saying you can't price something a certain way. I, mm. I mean, I understand it's a business, and they probably know their customer base but at the same time it's it's like this weird thing of like 
I, I think it's like you should just be like, oh, you're you're out of my price range. They, sh- they should. It's their job to find the clients. If <clears throat> right. they love mm-hmm. your work, which this gallery did, mm-hmm. they wanted me to be in their gallery, but mm-hmm. they weren't willing to take me on as you know, even a trial basis. Like mm-hmm. take five pieces of work. And sure, why your, not? it's your yeah. job to right. educate your clients mm-hmm. and tell them why you love my work. Right. Mm-hmm. And and then if they can't, if they won't pay the prices or whatever, then okay. But like there was not even a trial basis. It was very interesting. Yeah, to hmm. me, it's it's weird to yeah. tell you the artist that they should press it. I don't know. I always get angry at that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. It's like a th- it's like a big pet peeve of mine. Whenever artists or they kind of try to push you towards a direction, I get mad mm-hmm. at that. I just get mad at like it's like your job is to do this. If you don't think my work is what you want to sell then that's fine but yeah. you can't like the pricing even if you i mean i'm okay with them giving like little hints of like oh that's your prices are high right, like, right. feedback's good but. yeah but trying to kind of steer the artist in in certain aspects mm-hmm. i'm like uh that's not your yeah. job yeah uh but i don't know <laughs> it's a whole weird scenario i mean yeah. the gallery and scenario in general is just a weird a weird relationship i think artists have with you know galleries is a weird kind of love hate um weird control aspects yeah weird. there's always <clears throat> the kind of have you had any story. trouble like trying to find like places that you want to show or has it been relatively have you been um, relatively fortunate with that <laughs> <laughs> well um uh, so a couple things in the last in the last seven eight years, mm. um, I've sold about ninety five percent of my work on my own. Wow. Whereas before <laughs> that, it was the opposite. I would hardly mm-hmm. ever sell anything on my own. Really? Huh. But um, and the galleries sold most of it. Mm-hmm. And then that all changed. I had a studio sell one day because um, I was moving studios and I was looking at all of the artwork and I had my school at the time. And so I had everything on the walls for my students. And uh, I just was overwhelmed with packing up the artwork. And so I thought, well, I'm going to get some wine and cheese and put mm-hmm. some sticky notes with prices on them. On you know how to do all these. those things. <laughs> I do. <laughs> and I had never done that before because I was always, one of the reasons, because of the story I just told you about the mm-hmm. gallery, I never really thought I could sell my work in Utah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm res- I'm a reserved kind of timid person, so I'm not, as like a lot of us are, we don't want to go sell our own work. Right, so I never sure. did it. Mm-hmm. I'd have a random, you know, sell here and there. Mm-hmm. But I wasn't selling my work from Utah. And so anyway, I I put prices on all this stuff. And I sold like half a year's income in a week. Wow. Or more than that. Damn. From <laughs> sheer quantity. Oh, okay. <laughs> it wasn't yeah. the prices. It was everything was so cheap compared mm-hmm. to gallery prices. Mm. Galleries don't want to hear that, but I <laughs> yeah. mean, but they were mostly things that would have never gone into gallery anyway. They were demos mm-hmm. for the students, right. they were whatever, just little studies here and there. And then all of my students who had been studying with me for years, who had never bought anything and had been looking at this work on the walls for years, all of a sudden there was a price tag on it and mm. they bought stuff, mm. which I wasn't expecting either. That's cool. Yeah, so, that was what I was going to ask you is like, who do you know who? Well, of course, you would know who the people yeah. are who buy it, but like, who were they? So it turns yeah, out to be it was, students. It was friends, family, <laughs> my family even, and my family doesn't really buy art. Yeah. Um, my students, and then like you know, you have a basic mailing list. It wasn't that big, mm-hmm. but um, and then I had clients who can also afford the bigger pieces. Actually, bought like ten pieces at wow. once or whatever, mm-hmm. just because they cool. were so inexpensive. Mm-hmm. But it was a huge eye opener for me in that. Okay, I need to sell work. I can get creative, like whatever, and do right. it. and so since that, um, it was such a great thing for me to be able to do that. And I also think just to exercise that muscle that I never did about selling my own work mm-hmm. and being able to actually talk to people and take money for it without the gallery in between me and the right. work. Mm-hmm. That was a good thing for me, and so um, I've done that at least once a year. Or, and now I just do it 
like whenever I've got work laying around, I just do it via email. I don't even mm. have a big studio anymore. I'm working out of my house. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, but I'll just have studio cells and that's how I make a living at this point. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. And so the gallery thing doesn't, um, the Anne Long Fine Art is technically closed, even though she still represents a lot of us. Oh, interesting. Um, but uh, not selling enough for me to make a living off of, and, and I'm not sending that work anymore since the gallery is closed, but um, mm-hmm. only for certain shows. So in response to your question, um, mm-hmm. for the last 20 years, I just was in Anne Long's gallery oh, with wow. the Odd group show here and there with whoever. Mm-hmm. Um, and I never got myself into another gallery, which was not a hmm. smart thing. Mm-hmm. Um, because galleries always close eventually. Mm-hmm. Um, or you're they're just not going to sell as much as your work of your work all the time, right? Mm-hmm. So right. um I I approached the gallery I really would like to be in and got rejected, but had the nicest rejection letter with a bunch of like references and where and oh, really? real oh, like back awesome. and forth yeah. amazing <laughs> response from this gallery. Um and I do but I've had a lot of galleries call me. Um I've been lucky that way where I've gotten calls, but I haven't they haven't really been galleries that I wanted to pursue i don't know it was a lot i don't paint that fast Mm -hmm. so i'm not hugely prolific and um so me supplying one gallery in charleston and teaching full-time was kind of all i thought that i could do i mean i could have done more but it was kind of all i could do at the moment i guess Mm -hmm. which is you know part part of my excuse as to why i never got another gallery but Hmm. so right now i mean i have a gallery in carmel Mm-hmm. And he sold a few things, and he's great to work with. Oh, mm. I didn't know you had work in Carmel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Winfield Gallery. Oh, I'm, I'm not even familiar with yeah, that one. Yeah, huh. Carmel by the Sea. He's he's great. He's awesome to work for. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I'm mainly selling. I mean, luckily enough, but you know, necessity. It's like I got to pay the mortgage. I better mm-hmm. send out an email. And, yeah. Here, you know, when I go off to Italy, like I come back with a bunch of Italian landscapes and mm-hmm. and uh, those are an easy sell. Nice. You know, it kind of pays for the trip. and <coughs> That's cool. awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. When it, when it comes to your work, uh, I know Sergio mentioned it on the right here, and I've kind of noticed that like, as far as like, you have like, it seems like you have two different um, styles, I guess. <laughs> or it's like your 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 figurative work and your landscape work and your uh-huh. figurative work seems like it ha- you give yourself more freedoms to kind of experiment or mm-hmm. play around. I don't know how to explain it. You know, it's like uh, your your landscapes are much more just like painting what's yeah. in front of you, uh-huh. and then oops, and then your your yeah your your figurative stuff. You 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 add things that are obviously not there mm-hmm. or. Kind of things like that. Is it is that just kind of to like, um, like have fun, or is there mm-hmm. is there a reason why you separate the two? Well, um, I think the figurative work. I mean, the figure work is my passion, mm-hmm. really. I mean, that's to me the most interesting thing to paint. Um, as much as I love, I mean, I love nature and landscapes. Mm-hmm. Um, so the figure work, because for me, the the human figure is the most expressive thing uh, right it's the thing we can relate to the most right mm. i mean generally speaking but mm. um unless you're the cat lady mm. yeah i mean even though i do like animals and like right. the ocean better than most people mm. i would much yeah. rather paint a person yeah. um just because of the challenge right. i think um but i love like I love pattern mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and design, and I I love like two dimensionality of paintings. Just mm-hmm, that, mm-hmm. just abstract, sh- big shapes, bold colors, pattern. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like yeah, I can do that, like surrounding the figure, right? A lot more than I could with the landscape. Mm-hmm. I mean, I could with the landscape, but I don't have a vision in my head of how I would incorporate anything terribly invent. I mean, I invent right. all the time in my yeah. landscapes. I'm mm-hmm. definitely like painting that you know it's hardly ever a copy of what i see i'm definitely right. inventing but it's not in the same right yeah like i understand what you're saying adding, yeah, yeah yeah i mean all of us do that i'm sure but um 
yeah, the figure stuff, I can get into the like patterns mm -hmm. and different colors as backgrounds. And mm. um, I don't know, I've always, always loved pattern yeah. work. I, I noticed and, that, I was it you that was doing that on your Instagrams where you were making those like clay things where they were pattern y things? They looked really awesome. I can, um, I was just doing some plaster carving yeah. in Abu Dhabi. It was yeah. geomet the Islamic geometric mm -hmm, uh -huh, mm -hmm. patterns. Yeah. yeah, that stuff looked awesome. Yeah, that stuff I totally dig. Like, <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah, the Islamic design work. That's cool. Is that is that that's just is there anything built into the, any of that stuff, or is it just the enjoyment of like complicated patterns is why they they would do that? What I don't do you know mean the history. In, like those like symbolism or something. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, there's a ton of symbolism in that. Uh, yeah. and because, you know, they couldn't depict the human figure in their art. Mm -hmm. So it was always designed, like either, like the natural motifs, like mm -hmm. foliage, animals. Right. Um, I forgot about that. Yeah, the flora mm -hmm. and fauna, or they're doing geometric designs. Mm -hmm. And so you don't see the human figure historically in their design work, but right. all of the geometry does represent, like... God and right. oneness and all this, you know, yeah. all of that's definitely built in. Yeah, I have What's like that? weird. Uh, like my mom is Polynesian, and we grew up yeah. with these weird, like pattern things that always meant things. And I would, mm -hmm. they would explain it to me. I would always forget. Yeah, I still don't remember. But it was just like this weird idea of like this means this, and you're like, yeah, what does? What do you mean that means that? Like uh -huh. it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't mean that. <laughs> I don't know. It's like a weird language that's just mm -hmm. for those that kind of are built in that or like raised in that culture. Raised in that culture, yeah. yeah. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. I never thought of, but ours is just like, I don't know. I don't know explain it. There's like the stuff you were doing is much more mm -hmm. like a over, like a, a, it's a much more well designed, I would say. Like it, there's more to the symmetry of it where mm -hmm. uh, Tongan people just kind of do <laughs> like talking shit about my culture. <laughs> uh, that's cool. It, it seemed like that influ or like like that kind of I don't know if that pattern worked specifically, but it it seemed like there was a very clear link between what you were doing there and the pattern work in your work. I don't know. Yeah, some of the things are linked. I mean, I have done some of that, like, geometric design behind my figures. Mm -hmm. And I would like to do more, but I still, I don't know. Like, I'm I'm really, the, all of that Islamic-influenced geometric design work is kind mm -hmm. of on the back burner because I don't have a, I don't have this clear vision of it, mm -hmm. of how I want to incorporate it. I've tried with a few pieces, and I like it, but it's not. I don't know. It seems like I need to push it further mm. and probably do a lot more of the design work and learning how to construct these designs. But I also, I think also one reason why I'm on the fence or that I haven't really incorporated it is because I don't want to just take an Islamic design mm -hmm. and stick it in my painting. So whenever right. I do um, background designs for my paintings, it's always my design. Mm -hmm. It's not just taking one and then painting it whatever colors right, it's yeah. um it's a rare thing if there's ever a piece of design in there that has already been done not that mine's uh, totally unique but i mean i'm designing it whether mm -hmm. it's foliage um or a geometric hmm. thing and so that takes so much work that's so much more work than the figure painting mm -hmm. a million times more work and so because i don't have a clear vision i haven't really gone down that road enough but um i keep you know i love doing these geometric these islamic geometric design workshops hmm. um islamic pattern workshops mm -hmm. and i'm doing another one in morocco this spring nice. oh awesome taking hmm. two courses in fez and marrakesh so i'm really excited hmm. for that so i think if i can keep up with that at some point they'll kind of gel like what i want to do with it like, yeah. behind my figure work when, when you say vision is that kind of like a part of your process? Like you have, to, like, like you, like you, the idea comes first, and then you kind of pursue it. Mm, no, not always. In mm -hmm. fact, it's usually. Um, well, I have pieces like mm -hmm. of visions, right? right? Like little small aspects or something. But usually, what happens is 
I get a really abstract idea mm-hmm. or a lot of times, which I think all of us do too, if we have an empty frame mm-hmm. and we have a show, we need to put something in. <laughs> we're going to be like, I can use that frame because that's like $700 I don't need to spend or what right, much right. it is, right? So Jeez, yeah. you have an empty frame or you have an, a blank canvas. So a lot of times I already have parameters. Mm-hmm. And then that actually... Um, especially with an empty frame, I just put the frame up and then I'll get sort of an abstract idea of Mm -hmm. a figure emerging out of it or what direction do I want that pose going in or how cropped it is the figure or it might even be a color, like a color scheme. Right. I want blues and oranges for this frame Mm -hmm. or a lot of times it's music. It's a piece of music that I want my painting to feel like that piece of music. Hmm. And and then if I have something like that, then I can usually attach color scheme to that mm-hmm. emotion thing. And then I can start designing in my head. But the vision is not ever really that clear. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times, like any sort of meaning or theme or symbolism always happens at the end. Mm-hmm. Because... I mean, I'm, we're visual first, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, not everyone works the same way, but usually it's it's more of a visual evolution. Mm-hmm. It starts out kind of vague and abstract, and then I kind of dial it in for my parameters or, you know, whatever, the, the fabric, the materials, the frame, whatever you happen to have. And then um, by the end of it, whatever elements I'm putting in, whether it's a design in the background or mm-hmm. something that's, next to the model or the color of you know scarf she's got on her head or something Mm -hmm. that ends up the meaning behind all that ends up i don't figure it out until the end Hmm. that's interesting hardly ever Hmm. it kind of has to we and it's a lot of times it's really interesting um I have uh, one model in particular who I've worked with for like 20 years now. She's like a, like a sister to me. Mm-hmm. And and so we're really close. But even when we weren't such close friends, she, it was really weird how like the themes that ended up in my paintings applied to her. And I had no idea mm-hmm. until we were done with the painting. And then I would talk to her about, well, I think this is going to symbolize this and whatever. And um she would tell me stories about what had been going on with her and it really fit. And so that kind of made it, you know, kind of just kind of interesting and fun. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, Right. But, and I mean, to have some sort of a story makes it more interesting as I go along. Mm -hmm. But, um, but I usually don't end up like having it all laid out, like the story ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Once in a while that's happened where I have a theme and then I design visually to it. But usually right. it's I'm designing visually and then the theme or the symbolism kind of weaves its way in mm-hmm. yeah, organically. I, I, I work a little different, but I kind of get the yeah. end part. Like I, I think I mm-hmm. lean more towards like an idea or a story that I want to mm-hmm. tell. And then, yeah. but a lot of times I don't know the ending is kind of how uh, I put it. Yeah. Like I don't yeah. know how the yeah. story ends. And then I'm like, Oh, there it is. Like, that's, yeah. That's yeah. the how I want this thing mm-hmm. to finish. Yeah, uh, that's great. Yeah, but I think I think I'm thinking about it the entire time I'm painting, and usually mm-hmm. around the end, I'm like, okay, I've got it. Sometimes I'm I'm done like the you know like I'm the idea is already worked out. I'm just kind of doing it now. Right. But right. I kind of like the process of having a story and kind of a a mood to fit that story like Mm -hmm. or like i want this to be a tragedy or something you know it's like i just don't know how it's supposed to end correctly and then yeah you know usually around the end i'm like okay i figured this out Mm -hmm. uh but yeah there is a weird that's kind of the fun i think about it too is like you Mm -hmm. when you discover something during your art you get like really at least i get really excited about it like it's that boost of energy especially if you're kind of Taking you know, a while on a painting. Yeah. You know, the tedium of actually painting. Exactly. It. <laughs> yeah. You can lose uh, inspiration. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. No, uh, that's that's true. True. Especially if you yeah. nailed all the fun parts. I know. Right. I mm-hmm. mean, usually the best is like the very beginning, you're all excited, yeah, yeah. You lay it in. It's like yeah, the lay ins are looking really good because right. there's all this promise. Mm-hmm. And then you have to go through the whole process of painting it, right. which sucks. And then by the <laughs> end of it, you can see the light. Right. You know, the, end of the tunnel Literally highlights. And then, yeah. yeah and you're like oh yeah and you're painting the fun stuff that yeah. like brings it all together yeah and, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. And your story comes together. And it's like, oh, that's what that means. Yeah, that's right. pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I was kind of curious about something yeah. that you said there about um, music uh, kind of inspiring uh, in a way. Like, is that like a synesthesia thing for you? Or is it more just like kind of an intuitive kind of like this music yeah. sounds kind of purpley to me or whatever for, <laughs> for an example? Yeah, no, it's not synesthesia. <laughs> synesthesia I can't say it. no yeah. it's not that um it is more intuitive for sure um i just i love music it's kind of like sculpting to me i, oh, I think that if i could choose anything to be artistically in my life mm -hmm. it would be to be a musician mm -hmm. because i think music inspires me more than anything period mm -hmm. i mean aside from nature maybe but uh just as far as like the other arts go music mm -hmm. is definitely that um and then as far as the visual arts it's sculpture um, my wife today asked me what, if I had a musician that would m like <laughs> represent what like w what I would want in my art or uh -huh, what I think my yeah. art would look like musically. Yeah. Is there a, um, uh, let me bounce this idea like it was my idea. <laughs> is, is there like a, either even just like a genre of music maybe that oh. you kind of like, um, no, I don't even, I can't narrow it down to a genre at all. Is there um, stuff you listen to a lot when you're painting? Yeah, I always have to have music on. I mean, is there a specific, like... It ranges. I have a big range of music. I mean, you know, like, and then I'll go for, like, I'll have, like, a couple of playlists that mm -hmm. I listen to over and over and over for a year, you right. know, and then you switch yeah. it up or something. Um, and that, I mean, it's, it's quite varied, but right now um, there's a lot of war paint happening and a lot of what? war paint oh. the band war paint they're Not amazing familiar. they're amazing um what genre would that be i don't alternative rock <laughs> okay <don't> know. they're <laughs> um you know chelsea wolf Polisa. Mm -hmm. um None of these ring a bell, but I'm horrible at names, so. I have to send you my playlist. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Get you pumped up. Yeah. I oddly, I, I feel like a, for me, music, I'm, I'm always trying to do the opposite. Like when I'm painting, I'm trying to like bring my energy level down. Oh, yeah. Just because it gives me the patience I need. Oh, yeah. Where um, like really energetic music kind of makes me mess up. Oh, yeah. It's like, oops, I got too excited <laughs> there. And, and now I'm screwing my painting up. Yeah. So I have like one playlist I listen to only when only I paint. Only for music. Yeah. Only for painting, yeah. Um, I mean, I listen to it regularly, but mm -hmm. when I'm painting, that's the only thing I listen that's to for music. A little chill. Yeah. It yeah. just keeps my energy level like steady. Oh, man, I have to get it up there because I'm naturally really chill and mm. I'm really lazy by nature. <laughs> And so I have to, like, the music is kind of the only thing that can push me into that zone where mm. I can just, and it has to be loud and really intense, mm -hmm. um, even if it's classical music. Mm -hmm. it, there's one piece of, I don't even know who the music, mu musicians are, but it was some concert in Egypt and they were playing Mozart, mm -hmm. but they had these singers mm -hmm. doing the, these vocals with this Arabic and you know, I can't understand anything mm -hmm. but the vocals it was a male and a female and they're mm -hmm. like singing in and out of this Mozart I don't even wow. remember what Mozart piece it was mm -hmm. it is like it gives me chills just thinking about it their voices are like sound like little like birds just mm -hmm. in, <laughs> emerging from the sky and just but it's really really intense you know and so it doesn't matter what kind of music it is but it has to be intense and <clears throat> kind of give me enough of um i don't know like give you the chills mm -hmm. yeah hmm. and get my energy up and and if it's loud i can just i can really really focus because there's nothing else right i can't hear anything else yeah and so it really puts me into that zone of being able to work and lose you know lose track of time and get stuff done right. hmm. yeah if i try to listen to the news while i'm working or that's just no way. Yeah. It's like way too distracting and depressing. Anyway. And then all of a sudden you're, you're painting political stuff. And then you're pissed <laughs> yeah, off. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. It's not, not going to happen. <laughs> no. Good move. Listening to Wayne to dry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All sorts of stupid things. I know. I listen to podcasts all the time, but I, do. I can't really do it while I'm working. Mm. So I have to shut it off. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. I listen. I, I, yeah. I do random stuff. Yeah. I watch yeah. like... Yeah, watch podcast or read, listen to podcasts. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. I'd do everything except for hyped music, oddly enough. <laughs> but I, I do listen to music that does get me, like, that is like emotional mm-hmm. or, yeah. I don't know, stirring or something. But mm-hmm. it doesn't, I, when I mean hype, I mean just like I don't know, rap music, probably. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> something around that level. <laughs> it's like, so ego driven. I'm just like, I'm hella dope. <laughs> yeah. Look at me. I'm so cool. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that doesn't funny. help my art. Yeah. <laughs> well, when you were saying, like, if there's a type, what, did you just ask me, like, if there's this, you were asking me what type I listen to, but you said something about, like, the way you want my, like, if I could choose something like, the way my paintings yeah, sounded yeah. or something? Yeah, what was the question? Kind of like, is there a music that you would say that represent, like, if you, if your art became a, a sound, like a, yeah. a piece of music or something? Um, I know what I would want my art to sound like. Mm-hmm. What it does, what like my art now or up to this date sounds mm-hmm. like, I don't know. Like okay. drowning. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't I'm not I can't get object, objective enough mm-hmm. on that to mm, know. Yeah. Because, you know, I'm too immersed in it and then everything I do is always a disappointment because it was never as good as your intention. Mm. <laughs> sure. Right? It just always is kind of I mean, yeah. I'm not to say I'm not do, saying that to get down on myself, but it just never like you never achieve what you actually set out to do. Right. Mm-hmm. You're too nitpicky as artists. Yeah. I mean, it always looks better about a couple of years down the road. It's but you know, right true. when yeah. you finish something, it's like, oh, God, I can't yeah. look at that. You forget like, all don't. the flaws yeah. by the time it's yeah. in a couple all, of all years. the pain of yeah. like, like the oh, disappointment. Yeah. It's also like things, yeah. little things bug you when you're in mm-hmm. it. You're like, oh, I wish that little thing <laughs> yeah. wasn't there. And then yeah. you see it years later, and you're like, huh? Like, what was wrong with this? I know. Why yeah, was yeah. I so depressed for <laughs> yeah. six months after that? <laughs> yeah, for me, it's definitely like get it to a point where it's like, all right, good enough. I got to move on to the next thing. And then it drops off pretty quickly because I just start to nitpick it. And then after a while, it kind of comes back up like, okay, it yeah. is still kind of good enough ish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 But um, no, but if my, if, I could have my work sound like anything. Mm-hmm. I know that. And this has been the same for years and years is the voice of Cesaria Evora. Oh, Cesaria, no. you guys know her, surely. <laughs> no, she's from El Cabo know. Verde. Mm. Oh my God. You know, she's kind of like Nina Simone. She's okay, got really. that okay. husky, dark, oh, nice. sultry voice. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> and but um, this is an Italian? No, she's from Cape Verde. Huh? I don't, know, I don't know where that is either. And she's still living, I believe. And she, there's one song in particular called Saudade. I don't know how you say it. Mm-hmm. Saudade. And in Portuguese, it means um, like the longing for something that you've you've either never had mm-hmm. or you're missing something. It's that nostalgia. Mm-hmm. And the song, she she didn't write it. I mean, she, I think she kind of made it popular. Uh, I don't remember who wrote it, but back in the 50s. Mm. But, oh, you guys got to listen to her. <laughs> yeah, check it out for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm a big Amazing. Nina Simone fan, so. But Nina, yeah, Nina is definitely up there too. But yeah, mm. like the sound, like that voice and the mm-hmm. emotion that comes that's what i would like my paintings to sound mm-hmm. like but. it makes sense i mean it, it makes sense because i don't know like there's something like like nina simone she's so classically trained right mm-hmm. but she has that ability to meet classically trained with this uh, built-in emotion and soulfulness right. that just makes her so good because it sometimes classically trained can feel cold mm-hmm. and yeah. uh, if you can you know meet the two in some weird way i think that's where yeah. some of the greatest art comes from is that like ability to right. meet soul and and skill right exactly uh, yeah. Hmm. so yeah that's cool mm-hmm. Totally. Like that, I, I'll definitely check her out. Okay. I like all nice. those like soulful singers. Otis yeah. Redding's like m- one of my favorites. Mm. Yeah, she just, there's there's also something. This goes back to like being classically trained, I mm-hmm. think, or just like like working on a skill. I think one of the great things artists have is this ability to make something seem effortless. You know, like mm-hmm. uh, and when you see Nina Simone sing. Yeah. There's something where she she just doesn't look like she's trying. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It just comes off so smooth. Yeah. You're like, ah, oh, how are you this good? And then she's playing the piano and singing at the same time. Yeah. Like, oh, I know, it's crazy. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I know. Fun fact, did you know she wasn't 
like she she was only a classically trained pianist and she just like randomly was like i'll try to sing this song with my piano playing oh really Really? that's kind of how she became a singer people were like oh that's not bad (laughs) and that's how she became a singer songwriter or singer pianist she was just a pianist uh <laughs> More you know. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. I know that. I just realized that it's very similar to the Zach Olden camp. He said, "What does your art sound like?" Yeah. Um, it, yeah, it was actually a, a question that we added to the question corner thing for. I did. Yeah, we <laughs> we got to it yeah. early. Yeah. <laughs> it's cool. It's a good question. Yeah. I didn't remember that. Uh-huh. It's been that long. Yeah, but, uh, we've been during the holidays. We do a lot of solo episodes <laughs> because trying to get an artist to <laughs> meet us during Christmas weekend is oh, wow. not yeah. fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's awesome. What are we on time? Uh, we're close to an hour. Uh, mm. Should we start going towards the question corner? If you want to, sure. Yeah, I think so. Um, this is a lead episode. Um, yeah. <laughs> True. <laughs> Questions. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I know I yeah. prepped you for you these. We, we normally don't. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for doing that. <laughs> yeah, we're real assholes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sometimes the look in artist's face when we oh send them, the, when we ask them the question on the spot, they're like, "What's happening here?" Uh, <laughs> yeah, and somebody says, "What's your favorite artist?" And you're like, <laughs> "Yeah, tell me what." It's like, "Tell me a joke." <laughs> it's pretty much phrase. the equivalent, of, <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tell me your favorite joke. <laughs> um, I don't. <laughs> right. All right, then let's it's do this. It's time for Sergio's question corner. <laughs> So first, uh, can you it? hand me that bottle real quick before we oh, start? Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Bottle. Um, sorry. Let's start that over again. It's time for Sergio's <laughs> question corner. <laughs> so uh, first uh, question on our thing is, uh, who are your top five living artists? Who? <laughs> this is impossible. To yeah. Answer. Yeah. Um, and then you know I'm gonna give out five artists and then I'm going to go home and out mm-hmm. to the hotel yeah. and be like, oh, wow, I should have like said this one and this one. Yeah. Uh-huh. I don't know. That's really hard. Mm-hmm. Um, but, okay. I Yeah, I can do five. Um, Vincent Desiderio, mm, figurative awesome. painting, really amazing. Mm-hmm. And um, so haunting. And I think thought-provoking and emotional and um, s- technically amazing, but it's so far beyond that. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I oh, yeah. just, yeah, love his work. Um, I think Colleen Berry. Um, oh, she's awesome. She yeah. just is amazing. Her, some of her best figure drawings kind of make me feel like when I'm looking at a Michelangelo figure drawing. Mm, wow. I mean, mm-hmm. they're so... The form is so solid and right. so just, you could just like reach out and grab it, you know? And mm. she understands the form, and but her work is really sensitive. And I mm. just um, just bought a portrait drawing of hers. And oh, really? I've always nice. kind of been lusting after mm-hmm. getting a figure drawing of hers. Yeah, her love work has like too, a haunting but, quality to it as yeah, well. Yeah, very, very haunting. But um, the portrait drawing was even you know, way better than mm. even I thought it was going to be. Awesome. <laughs> and That's just awesome. so sensitive. Um, and I love Travis Schl- Schlott's work. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Love, love, love his paintings. I love the way he uses pattern in the background. And it's like you get, you know, they're not so realistic. So it's it's a painting. You can see his paint mm-hmm. strokes. And, mm-hmm. and then he just, he'll simplify these beautiful patterns and into these amazing brush strokes and abbreviations and he's got a great sense of color <laughs> harmony too so i'm trying to remember if, maybe i'm thinking of the wrong person but is he the one who kind of does like hatching um like throughout the figure like to render the form it almost looks like he's like hatching into the paint like it's like a really thin layer of paint um or am I thinking somebody else? Possibly. I mean, it, it's kind of like it's very it's very painterly, but there are areas that are quite thin. Mm. Um, but he also gets pretty thick paint in the lights. I mean, but you can see a lot of the like the tone of the canvas, the mm-hmm. underneath layers. So that's okay. kind of and it 
hatching. I don't know. Maybe there is some hatching in there. Yeah. But you Cougat. Can, yeah, yep. yeah. No, I'm sure you know his work. Um, <laughs> he lives in Paris. His wife is Kate Lehman, and her work is also amazing. Um, um, Give it a goog. <laughs> Give it a goog. <laughs> um, okay, how many is that? Uh, three. Three. <laughs> okay. Um, and I was going to sit for like um, a living contemporary, really contemporary work. I love um, Yayoi Kusama's like her light installations, those infinity rooms, and I have yet to see one in person. <laughs> Almost got to one that was in Vegas last year, and then they they um, they ended the show early after we had tickets in the hotel and everything. No way. Um, so I didn't get to see that, um, but I'm dying to see hmm, one I'm of her installations. Uh, yeah, have you seen her work? There, yeah. Is are they as good in person as? Okay. <laughs> yeah. So that that was a yes. I get. Everybody. Yeah, I get really inspired from her work, and just because she's got a lot of patterns too, so not just her light rooms, but a lot of her paintings too. Mm. Um. And um. Okay. There's one more, right? That's mm -hmm. four. Oh my god! Can I look at my notes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know when when because we asked this question, I took like three days writing all the living artists that I like really really like and then I had to whittle it down to it's really impossible <clears throat> and I think one yeah. of them Mark English just died so oh. <laughs> Mark English did yeah, yeah. so oh. it was like that was one of my top fives I was like not have to oh, wow. great. Fi figure out who mm -hmm. fills that spot yeah. oh I know I know it's a photographer mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure where she's from but I think Eastern Europe Mm -hmm. um, and I just found her on Instagram, and her work is unbelievable. Her name is Laura Macabrescu. Hmm. However, yeah, actually, kind of. Oh, familiar. her photographs are as haunting as you can get. Uh, mm. Beautiful um, portraits, figure work, um, pretty much black and white. If she put, if there's any color in, well, no, she does color as well, but it's just very subdued. And, kind of muted or like all in sort of blues and greens and extremely haunting and provoking mm -hmm. oh okay yeah i have seen her work before yeah yeah but her, actually so i bought a like an ebook from her or something mm -hmm. about her um i think her real name is actually camilla with a k hmm. and something else but because she had a whole different name that you were like sending the money to hmm. i don't know hmm. And anyway, I'm not sure because um, maybe not. Anyway, <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> Conspiracy but I love, theory. I love, I like I love it. The word. <laughs> nice. So yeah. Awesome. There's five. <laughs> so uh, Josh's favorite question: Is there an artist you work you hate? <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, I don't know. I actually don't know that there's anybody's work that I hate. There's a lot mm -hmm. of art I hate, mm -hmm. but it, when I come across it, I mean. Mm -hmm. I couldn't, and actually, I, I used to hate a lot. I don't hate anymore. I just don't care. <laughs> just right. well, don't, I, like, it doesn't make that. me mad anymore. Right. Well, I guess once in a while it might, but it, nothing really makes me that angry anymore. And I no duct tape anything. bananas or anything. Like that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just not worth hating. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is the thing. I mean, right. I don't like Kuhn's work. Mm -hmm. I mean, just, but I don't. You know, yeah, you don't yeah, spend I, time hating. I don't on it. spend time <laughs> well, I hating think that's on it. Most of us, I, yeah, we I'd oddly, say. I think, have to spend more time because we talk <laughs> about yeah, it. Right really. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If, and people get bait you into talking yeah. shit. Too, yeah. so. If it wasn't for this, I wouldn't think of any of them ever. I would just <laughs> yeah. be doing my own thing. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I don't think so. I mean, you'll come across you know, really horrific installations and museums that I just don't understand why it's under the term visual art mm -hmm. whatsoever. But mm -hmm. yeah. I usually don't even spend the time trying to figure out who the artist is if it's right, that bad. Yeah. It's like, okay. A lot of times, yeah. That's right. kind of how I feel about it. Mm -hmm. I tend to, if I'm like hating, so it's more like hating the concept of what they're doing than like the person itself yeah. right. or the validation it gets mm -hmm. sometimes yeah. that you're like there's good art out there don't waste your time with this people right. uh yeah right <laughs> exactly <laughs> like don't spend your time pretending you get something here <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> right the uh, stupid yeah exactly stupid duct tape banana <laughs> yeah but yeah yeah i get it <laughs> 
Don't waste your time. The best thing about the duct tape banana is that I'm probably going to get the details wrong because I didn't actually see this, but it ended up as a condom ad in Italy. Oh, really? <laughs> oh. Something like the condoms all... What was the thing about the duct tape? What was the theme with that duct tape thing? No, mm-hmm. I don't remember, but it ended up... <laughs> it was really spot on. <laughs> it was the only good thing. So you whoever know, with, bought that... Used it for that? Um, no, no, no. I don't think so. It's just, you know, um, everybody was doing their version of the duct tape banana oh, uh-huh. on social media. Right? Oh, sure. Mm-hmm. Well, so some condom company in Italy nice. had their version out there. And it was, That's awesome. You know, I shouldn't, because now I can't remember the details. That's no, good enough. Give great. it a go. <laughs> that was great. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I'll laugh at that one. The others are just stupid. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Awesome. Uh, then the next question is... Um, what would you do with David Cho money? <laughs> hmm. well, we know you'd move to Italy. <laughs> yeah. I'd move to Italy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'd find my house on the coast somewhere in southern Italy where it had nice. lots of Arab influence with all the design. Oh, beautiful. Architecture, yeah. Food. <laughs> yeah. That's the first thing I'd do. Um, I'll tell you, I would start painting some really large paintings mm-hmm. kind of mural mm-hmm. size get a big studio yeah and, um, sculpt probably too right i might sculpt <laughs> <laughs> go down that road thought about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah that's probably what would happen um, awesome god that's a great idea <laughs> that's what i'll do um yeah and i would love to do huge paintings um kind of with the general theme about what we've done to our planet i mm-hmm. guess and Lots of figures and underwater themes, mm-hmm. figures underwater and just what's happening to the earth, I think. For sure. Um, that's what I'd like to do. I'd like to to have kind of a little side school for kids mm-hmm. who don't have the opportunity to study what they want and do art. And All right. So you can let them know, don't get better. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. I think that's what I do. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Good move. Do some big work where, you know, it doesn't matter. You can pay your bills while you're still trying to do big work that might never sell. Mm-hmm. Or galleries might not want it or don't think they right. could sell it or whatever. Have you seen that? Quick question. Have you seen that documentary? What's the documentary called with the sculptor? Oh, um, uh, Struggle. Struggle. Have you seen that no, documentary? I don't know. Oh, I would highly recommend it. It's a super interesting a documentary um, of a sculptor. I mean, he's, he's an artist in general, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, he, he, this is kind of do- during like World War II era stuff, and he did some really cool things. And he was trying to do really big uh, public art jobs. One was like a huge sculpture next to like in the Vatican or something like that. Remember that? Oh. And is he kind living of, yeah. now? Is he, he still he died fairly recently? I yeah, want to say like early 2000s, maybe. Something like that, yeah. Huh. There, he has like a story where Hitler asked him to paint his portrait and he mm. he sent a picture of a pig as like Hitler and sent it back to him. He was like, oh yeah, and then sent him a, a pig painting. <laughs> uh, but it's, an, it's one of those weird, interesting lives based off i think like the intensity of that time you know so like an artist kind of a a really like renowned working artist at the time Uh has like this interesting way through life and Mm -hmm. uh but yeah i would highly recommend it it yeah yeah absolutely (laughs) yeah he has like a really interesting life because he comes to america and just kind of lives in relative obscurity but then he ends up in like kind of this uh like early lowbrow scene with uh, all these uh uh, comic artist crumb and all those yeah. Uh, yeah so yeah it's Good interesting thing. like just like the way he thinks is so off the wall yeah, <laughs> yeah. but he's a character. yeah the character but kind of an artistic genius in his own way huh. yeah, mm. yeah. Uh, uh, uh sorry i interrupted the question that oh. <laughs> it, it was in my head <laughs> because of like it reminds me of like you saying that you do like really big things mm-hmm. and he pursued this like these really big projects that almost mm-hmm. got off the ground. I think he did some. I can't remember now if he did any. Um, I believe he did some like in Poland where he was mm-hmm. from, right? And I believe there there were plans that he was going to do more, yeah. but they never materialized. His studio got bombed, so I think oh. he lost a lot of like his oh sculptures. God. Wow. But it's super interesting. 
Um, yeah, sounds like it. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Sorry. <laughs> Again. <laughs> uh, yeah, we already did the what does your art sound like one. But, uh, so we'll do the. Uh, Sorry again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so the. I, I, don't know, I never know what to call this. Like, we just call it like the hot seat uh, artist oh corner where you just kind of give your... Uh, Cook fire. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's part of this. <laughs> so, yeah, just give your uh, opinion, quick opinion on these famous artists from, mostly from history, but yeah. <laughs> so, uh, there's a few that I kind of switched around, but yeah. So well, opinion on their work? Just, just uh, yeah, whatever? I guess kind of it either. whatever. Yeah, whatever. Okay. <laughs> what what they mean to you maybe or what you think they like mean. First to, thoughts. Like, yeah. You say like um, fall and someone's like maple leaves. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. So first one is uh, Vincent Van Gogh. Oh, Okay, Vincent van Gogh. Uh, that was the first real art museum exhibit I saw oh. in mm. Rome. Mm. Um, oh, really? Mm. And um, it wasn't the first art museum I saw, but like a, a real, like an exhibit mm -hmm. outside of just the museum collection. And uh, it floored me. Mm. And it, I really, really loved it and everything. I mean, it was an amazing show and just the texture of his paint and uh, colors and everything. Uh, the interesting thing, so... Like, I want to say, like, what the thing that hits me about Van Gogh, it feels like it's just this re repressed passion kind of thing. Like, it was repressed, and it's like somehow managed to get it out on the canvas. But it mm -hmm. was interesting because, um, I when I first started studying with my teacher, and hopefully he won't listen to this podcast, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> when uh. I had the catalog from the show mm -hmm. and he got really down on me for liking Van Gogh. Mm -hmm. Really down on me. Mm -hmm. He's pretty opinionated. I mean, we all are, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but he got so down on me. <laughs> I was such an impressionable young art student and he, his work was just like, I was in awe of what he was doing and mm -hmm. what he was teaching me and everything. And so I, you know, I became very influenced by him mm -hmm. and for mostly good <laughs> mm -hmm. but that particular i'll never forget that this van gogh thing that it, he made me feel so bad about it that i threw away my catalog mm -hmm. and then years later when i kind of got out from under the thumb of you know mm -hmm. your teacher mm -hmm. um i really really wish i still had that catalog mm -hmm. like it's weird is because it was such a first time for me mm -hmm. and I still love Van Gogh, but I had repressed my love for his work mm -hmm. for a lot of years because of that incident. Hmm, he wasn't the only artist that I, you know, kind of like, okay, no, I don't really like, <laughs> so, <laughs> you know? Um, and I kind of just took it, you know, to heart because it was like, well, I felt like I didn't know anything about art. I was a young right. student, you know, and mm -hmm. I had gone to Italy to learn and everything. But anyway, so that kind of like repressed passion thing was right. also with me. <laughs> right, yeah. But I, whenever I open a Van Gogh book or see a painting, I always think about that. Hmm. That's interesting. Like that, just that experience, and I'm sure that we all have, like mm -hmm. whether it's from, you know, a teacher in art school or a fellow student or just another artist who's making you feel like crap because you For sure. like something or you don't like something. Yeah. Yeah, there's ne that negative of, feedback can yeah, linger there. Yeah, the negativity there. there for something that you really love. For sure. Yeah, mm. Van Gogh. Like, it's just funny. I like to think about it every time I look at a Van Gogh. Hmm. <clears throat> so, so every you know. hipster kid is born. <laughs> 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 they like something, and someone's like, you, you can't like <laughs> Justin Biebs. Yeah. I can't. I can't like anything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's kind of a long rapid fire <laughs> <laughs> no it's all good these end up doing that anyway uh next uh name salvador dali mm, kind of brilliant and psychotic <laughs> um this is one of my first loves as an artist mm. one of the first art books i ever have i don't really i mean i'd still like a lot of his work when i see it in person i like it but it doesn't do much for me anymore mm -hmm. That seems to be the kind of the theme <laughs> with the artist that we asked the question for. Like, seems like he's a guy that most people grow out of in a way. Mm, yeah, when you're younger, it's like, wow, <laughs> yeah, right. so cool. <laughs> right. Yeah. 
That makes sense. Mm-hmm. First time you get high, first time you look at Dolly. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's yeah. also like, <laughs> like the, the more you like learn about like any kind of art form, the, the less you want someone to spoon feed things. Mm-hmm. It kind of feels like that in a way. It's more like I would rather mm-hmm. it be a bit subtle, a bit hidden. Yeah, he puts I get everything what you mean. out there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Although he does hide faces. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next name is Pablo Picasso. Don't care. Don't care. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's just too brown. Too brown and too boring. Although I did, um, I did see Guernica. I went to the Prado for the first time ever a couple of years ago. And... Mm. Uh, it was pretty powerful, I'll admit. Like, I was, yeah, it was pretty powerful. Yeah. Painting, for sure. But it's the first time I've experienced that in front of a Picasso. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, I like some things, and maybe his blue period or something, his earlier work. Mm-hmm. But the brown cubism stuff, I can't, I just can't. It just does, ugh. Yeah. <laughs> it seems like Guernica's like his shining mm-hmm. star. Yeah, I'd say yeah, so. Yeah, 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 for sure. Uh, yeah. Picasso, more like pick asshole. <laughs> Zing. Sergio pauses. Yeah. Are we done talking here? Yep. Let me push that button. <laughs> Just gotta know how to work that soundboard. <laughs> Next uh, name, Monet. Monet. Um, Monet's work makes me feel like it makes me feel the weight of the sky. Hmm. I don't know why, because it's not hmm. like heavy paintings. It's got, I don't know. They're just, I don't know what it is. I've always felt like there's something about the sky that when I'm hmm. looking at, even if there's the water lilies, it still feels like the sky like coming down on me. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Is that good or bad? It's not bad. <laughs> I like I like money. You're making work. me think that I've, I haven't bad. looked at his work right. <laughs> Maybe it's not the weight like coming down or just being enveloped by the sky or something. Mm. I don't Interesting. Know, surrounding. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I never really thought of it that way, but yeah, kind of think about it, uh, like, <laughs> like ju- just thinking about his work. Yeah, just probably the way that it's that he kind of constructs his skies with paint. Like it's there is sort of this. Um, I don't know. If, I don't even know if I'd call it weight, <laughs> like like a heaviness yeah, to it. But mm-hmm. I know what you're saying, though. There's like a, I don't know. There's. Yeah, it's like a, a weight to the atmosphere. I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's, it's atmospheric. Good, it's like enveloping you it. with all like the space that's between you and the subject. Mm-hmm. Like whether it's just the space or uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. Yeah, hmm. that's cool. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Close on me. Uh, Frida Kahlo is the next name. <laughs> wow, so many things about Frida Kahlo. I. I do love the fact that she lives separately from her lover and they had a bridge across the house <laughs> so they could have sleepovers. It'd be cool <laughs> if you had a drawbridge. That's so my you favorite could be thing. Like, Not tonight. I really, that's my favorite thing about Frida. Um, <laughs> no, yeah, her work, um, it may just, whenever I see it, it's not really incredibly inspiring to me, but it makes me, I'm intrigued by it. It makes me feel like, an isolated little girl. Mm. I don't know. Hmm, Alone yeah, in my basement bedroom. I don't know. <clears throat> What's interesting with Frida, I find, is that like, like I'm not the biggest fan of Frida. Uh, not, I'm just not that into her work. Mm-hmm. Uh, but she, she's the one where when we ask this question, I get them, like it almost like everyone's, a lot of people's answers make me like her work more in a weird way. Right, yeah. Uh, uh, that doesn't apply to like any, anyone else on the list that I'm not a big fan of. Hmm. Uh, she's like the one where I, I hear more convincing uh, opinions of why her work is good than um, uh, yeah. other people's mm-hmm. that I'm not a fan of. Mm-hmm. Which makes me, I don't know, like her more. <laughs> Even yeah. if I don't like her work still i like her more yeah uh, it kind of makes is... you do want to explore the psychology of you know or just the human psyche i mean mm-hmm. it, yeah it kind of does make you want to right mm. makes you kind of sit up and think about it but visually mm-hmm. i'm not i don't really care for a lot of it but it's definitely intriguing for you know, sure it definitely sucks you in mm-hmm. yeah 
Yeah, I'm also not like the biggest fan of her as a painter in that way, but there is something about her work that uh, does make you kind of want to at least give it more than a passing glance at yeah. the very <laughs> least. Uh-huh. So uh, maybe that is why her work endures more. It kind of seems to be like this universal feeling like people wanting to reach into mm-hmm. her brain a bit more. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, next one is Georgia O'Keeffe. That's a new one for the mm, list. That's a new one on the list. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Georgia O'Keeffe. Um, so I don't love her work visually mm-hmm. a ton. I like some things, but I don't love it. Mm-hmm. But I really like the feeling that it gives me which is kind of odd because usually if it gives me any kind of feeling that I like, I like it visually. Mm -hmm. Um, But there's a lot of power and delicacy at the same time with her work. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's the feeling that it gives to me, which I like. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. But I don't look to her work as like for inspiration. Right. But you know, like your, your tastes, change in your life too right you go through sure. different stages of, mm-hmm. of what interests you and what you delve into and so even thinking about these artists like is it like you know Frida Kahlo I like and George O'Keefe I mean yes there's these things but maybe I should take a look at them again mm. you know and right I don't no, not. figure out <laughs> like what yeah you know. yeah I feel like there's a lot of artists whose work you kind of grow up around and you don't really you don't think about it as much as an artist until you actually paint like for 20 years or whatever Mm -hmm. and then you start to see a little bit more of what people see in it and it's not necessarily always what um i guess what people tell you you should um care about when you look at their work you kind of find it on your own what Mm -hmm. what you like about it kind of like what kind of how i went with van gogh like uh i didn't really care about his work that much until i started painting more and started mm-hmm. to get it more mm-hmm. i also think that yeah. like some of these artists they have to battle the the fact that their work is on postcards yeah mm-hmm. exactly mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they have to battle us seeing them so often as a right. piece of merchandise mm-hmm. as a you know to give your aunt or something mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> that that you just can't, you, it's almost like it can't get, it's hard to look past that mm-hmm. right. and just yeah. judge it for what it is. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Monet suffers from that a lot. I feel yeah. like. Van Gogh too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Next name is Mark Rothko. Um, that just makes me think about the sound of it, like a cello hmm. underwater. Like, Oh, weird. <laughs> <laughs> Like, there's just this slow vibration Mm -hmm. happening that kind of, it affects your body. It makes your Mm -hmm. body feel like that. Right, right. Um, I don't, like, I do like seeing them in person, but I don't think about him or, like, look at images of his work Mm -hmm. as far as, like, when I'm trying to get inspired. But I do like, I do like a lot of his color Mm -hmm. harmonies and... Yeah, when you when you explained Georgia O'Keeffe, it kind of seems similar to how a lot of people explain what Rothko is. It's like not necessarily visually appealing, or mm-hmm. but it kind of makes you feel a certain way. There's still a visceral sort of reaction yeah. that they can, and even sense. Monet, in a way, how you explain that. There's mm-hmm. like a, a, a kind of like there's an atmosphere to mm-hmm. his work, and like it kind of pulls you like you're in yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Uh, that also reminded me of how people kind of explain Rothko. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's almost like he took that one aspect of artwork and got really good at it, or something. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. That seemed like yeah. his focus was that. Right. Whereas, like somebody like Georgia O'Keeffe, maybe wasn't like necessarily going after that specifically. She mm-hmm. just kind of painted what she wanted to paint. But um, if that. Maybe that effect happens for yeah. people. But I think scale on like all three of those artists is a big presence of their work. You know, like yeah. how big Monet's are and, mm-hmm. that's and Georgia true. Keefe. I think that's like the added effect of scale has mm-hmm. that right. ability to kind of mm-hmm. draw you in and create this other weird feeling in mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
Yeah. Yeah, there's a physicality that they're giving. I mean, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah part of it's definitely scale. I think for me with Monet, it's the vibration of all the brush strokes, mm-hmm. the, the scintillating color right. and value thing happening, but it, it really vibrates. So you you get this physical sense, which I guess is what I was trying to say, like being enveloped or the weight of the sky mm-hmm. or something around me. Mm. And Rothko does the same thing. It's almost like this, they're kind of physical for how simple they are. Right. They're really physical when mm-hmm. you're standing in front of them. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, anyway. that's, that's, that's awesome. I, I love the cello underwater thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh that's a new name too. What if cellos underwater sounded like a screeching cat? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't expect that. Then that would be Dolly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, next be- name, Banksy. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Clever, provoking, provocative, thought provoking. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm not. To tell you the truth, I'm not that familiar with as much as he's done. I don't really know a lot about him or his mm-hmm. work, and so like when I see it, yeah, it's just kind of clever and thought provoking. But mm-hmm. beyond that, I mean, I think I think he's done stuff that I would feel stronger about if I actually researched it. But I've never had mm-hmm. that really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just not in your it. wheelhouse, really. <laughs> that makes sense. You know, I mean. I don't know. Some things are, but you just don't, you haven't taken the time to like mm-hmm. get into it, I guess, or mm. whatever, or I don't know. Sure. Yeah. It's a bit like pop music. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I have no idea what most Drake Not songs really. sound like, but people <laughs> seem to love them. <laughs> 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 Sounds like overrated singing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, uh, last name, Bob Ross. I've never seen a Bob Ross episode. <laughs> really? <laughs> wow. I'm not, I don't know. It just never happened. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Fair enough. I don't enough. know how that's possible. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I've seen snippets, but mm-hmm. I've never actually watched Bob Ross. It just was never part of your, um, uh, yeah, I don't like know. Like cultural. Did, <laughs> Sorry. I, yeah, I don't know. Huh. I mean, I don't even know. Is he on like just PBS? Normal, and he stuff. was a PBS yeah, yeah. thing. It started PBS. It's kind of like you could either accidentally see an otter catch a fish for <laughs> five hours, or, right. or Bob Ross <laughs> paint a painting. Was... I guess. I, I mean, I love PBS. I, mean, I guess I wasn't watching it. Mm. So I, I don't know. Growing up, I don't know. I never saw Bob Ross. Yeah. He's kind of like a Rothko in that he sucks you in, even though you're not really interested in the painting. He, 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 there's this guttural thing to just keep looking at it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm going to have to get on YouTube tonight and actually watch. I should have oh, done fine, that before. Yeah. The yeah, yeah. You'll be fine. Yeah, that's a rabbit hole. If you watch anything, yeah. just watch him clean a brush on his, yeah. on his palette. Exactly. Suck on it. Uh, awesome. Those uh, are all the questions. Oh, yeah, we did it. Oh, okay, I made it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, I think we removed all the softballs from that list, huh? He's like, all how do you softballs? feel about Rembrandt? Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> yeah. All the ones I feel just like, yeah. You know, it's like, it's like uh, what can good. I say? Can't say. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I just realized that now I'm like, all these are like, uh, either you... <laughs> I don't know. A lot of them, I feel, it felt a bit trolly, like we're trying to make someone talk some shit. <laughs> Love them, hate them, really? don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, awesome. Well, we did it. Thank we did you. the podcast. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah, this is so awesome. I, this is my first podcast. Oh, is yeah. it really? Uh, yeah. For some reason, I thought you did suggested donation before. No. Uh, okay. Actually, Tony said like, yeah, let's get you on the podcast, but it hasn't happened. Oh, okay. <laughs> Nice. And Tommy. Yeah. <laughs> Guess we're better. <laughs> yeah. So the yeah. second place would be them. <laughs> yeah. Well, they haven't they have they haven't been too consistent recently. No. Yeah. So true. Um, if they could just do that, that would be awesome. <laughs> I like their podcast too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> They're one of the few art podcasts I actually enjoy listening to. All right. What are the other ones? <laughs> Actually, on they're, the <laughs> they're just the one. <laughs> there's just two. They're, they're the one. I, yeah. I don't mind Draftsman. Uh, uh, there's a couple I take a uh, peek at sometimes, like Art Attack sometimes. Um, one drives me nuts. <laughs> yeah, I know you're, I know you're totally. That, but I don't remember. <laughs> uh, it's an artist and a, 
hmm. art historian who drives me nuts. <laughs> yeah. It's one of those like mm. everything I hate about like <laughs> people that talk about art is, is involved in the, <laughs> yeah. the the lady in the show. She's just like it's one of those things. I mean, I've talked about this over and over, but it's like when you don't do art, sometimes you think something that someone does is like genius or difficult. Mm. But if you're an artist, you're like, no, it's not genius or difficult. Like that happens all the time. Yeah. People do this all the time. Uh -huh. Somehow you, you just lacking the knowledge of like the technical ability, mm -hmm. value something that's not that valuable. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what she does. Well, the whole entire show for me is just that. I'm like, I can't hear you talk anymore. <laughs> yeah. My brain hurts. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we did it. Yeah. Um, anything you'd like to promote as far as like any upcoming workshops or anything like that? Oh, well, okay. Um, yeah, well, since we're already into the one I'm here in yeah. the Bay Area for, that's a little too late for that. But, right. Um, but I, I will most likely be doing another one next year at mm -hmm. um, Baca here in nice. uh, San Carlos. I think we're in. Mm -hmm. um, and, but... As far as this year goes, um, the next one I have lined up, I'm doing a month long apprenticeship, which is new. I have not done a work like a workshop thing for that long uh, since I had my own school. But so this is a month long apprenticeship in Raleigh, North Carolina, mm. um, with Alia El Bermani, oh, okay. Alia Fine mm -hmm. Art Studios. Familiar and with um, we already have quite a few people signed up. There's nice. only nice. spots for eight people, and this is going to be like really fun. And since I used to live in North Carolina, I uh, I'm like okay, I'll do it a month <laughs> long. Yeah, nice. let's, let's go for it. I'm really excited to be <laughs> back there for that long again. Awesome. Um, and so we'll be doing a large uh, figure painting, a nude, with some ornamental design background stuff and um, get really creative with it. And hopefully mm. everybody will bring diff lots of different ideas to the table. Um, I'll be painting with the students five days a week, all day long. Um, so our main projects are figure, nude, with a design, like an ornamental design background. We'll be doing a portrait, a full-size portrait in the interior. So those are our two main projects, and then we'll have lots of little anatomy. Um, we'll have specific hand lessons, like sculpting, drawing, and painting the hand. Mm -hmm. um, and then we'll do anatomy in context of our figure model. And we'll be doing some plein air painting if anybody wants to work after class is finished. <laughs> nice, nice. We'll do maybe once a week plein air, you know. Oh, so sweet. outside, <laughs> so... And lots of composition and design <clears throat> projects along, like little projects along the way too. So it's going to be very intense. And Sounds cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's September of 2020 in Raleigh, North Carolina. So Sounds nice. awesome. Yeah, yeah. You're in that area. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, uh, good. Cool. Mm -hmm. Do you have a website or social My media? My website is down. <laughs> um, and uh, best place to find you on Instagram then? Yeah, or? Instagram. Okay. I mean, I'm on Facebook too, but Instagram's mm -hmm. got all the work. And mm -hmm. uh, just Camille Corey, Camille spelled with a K. Yeah. And um, yeah. Corey and if anybody is two in R's. <laughs> Corey with two R's, if anyone's in Florence, Italy this spring, I'll be there from April through the end of June. Oh, very cool. And mm -hmm. um, you come paint landscapes with me. I might do mm -hmm. kind of a private. Or like a, just a smaller, not really a workshop workshop, but mm -hmm. take a week, come paint in the gardens outside of Florence with me. And awesome. You can hit me up. Very yeah. cool. Hmm. Send me a message. Mm. Awesome. Anyway. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for doing yeah, this. Thanks, you guys. <laughs> yeah. It was great. Yeah. Absolutely. Very fun. Very Easy peasy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Before I forget, uh, anybody in Santa Rosa this Friday, my girlfriend Vanessa and her friend Emma will be having a show at Local Barrel. <laughs> so, might as well. If you're, I know there's a, some Santa Rosians listening to this right now. So, might as well get a beer over there. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah, this has been Waiting Dry. If you're still listening. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs>